joining us today on Inspiring Ideas for the Classroom. We have Kirsten McKinley. Kirsten is the Innovative Specialist at Wabash Valley Education Center. So thanks for joining us, Kirsten. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Innovative Specialist, let's start there. Uh, let's start with what uh, Innovative Specialist would do at a service center. So I like to tell people it's a fancy term for I solve all of our technology problems. So um, when I first started, um, I it was more like um, workflow, so streamlining our workflows. So we um, we worked a lot with like hard copies, files. Um, it was pretty much a Microsoft um, Office. And when I came in and we started working on workflow, we switched everything over to Google. So now we're a Google Office and um, we always joke, the ladies always joke when they um, were in office of um, five ladies. And when we get something done in Google, like we all cheer because we've come so far. So um, now my job has kind of morphed into how can I help teachers? So we do, I do a lot of professional development for teachers, um, some coaching. I've got some tech teams that I have, um, but that's where my passion is. It's with um, the teachers and, you know, helping them connect with their students better using technology. Well, that's perfect. Uh, Cause right now it's we're all using technology and we all need help. <laughs> we've been forced to do it. Whether we liked it or not, we've been forced. Yes. We've, uh, I guess we've all had an upgrade. No choice. That's right. And so what are some things there then uh, that you've seen and uh, helped some teachers with that's kind of working for them right now in this time yep. of forced yep. technology? <laughs> The first thing I'm going to share is not um, technology wise, and it's not even really a teacher thing, but it's more for us parents who are working from home. So I have a five year old and a three year old who are in the other room and I saved the TV time for this, but um, I felt like they were constantly and I was when I was on zoom calls, I had to see other teachers having the same thing. Like you give that parent look and you can tell you're looking off screen and you're giving them that look or you're holding that finger up like hold on, please don't interrupt this call. Um, so I stole this idea. It's just like I colored this in two minutes and it's just a stoplight and they know that if it's if the clothespins on red, like, hey, you can't talk to mom now go in the other room. If it's yellow, I tell them you can approach me and just quietly ask me a question. If it's green, you're good to go. So I know that for us parents who are working from home. I saw that from like a kindergarten teacher. I'm like, of course, kindergarten teachers always have the best ideas. So I stole that from them. Um, I've seen that used in classrooms. I didn't think about using one uh, for at home or during this. I just I did tired, yeah. most of the time. <laughs> I know I was always, I was tired of like the stare, like the please, please don't interrupt this call. <laughs> um, okay, so for technology wise, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Well, actually, I'll start by saying, so Wabash Valley, we have about 40 districts um, who are members and um, a lot of the, how we are able to function is um, the districts pay us, you know, a certain fee to be either a part of our consortium or sometimes they join a certain grant consortium. So we have a huge title three consortium. There's over 85 districts. Um, we also have a large um, title four grant. So that title four is for professional development. So all of these schools, I think there's about 17, you know, have paid into um, Wabash Valley and in exchange Wabash Valley provides um, high level professional development. Well, COVID hit and then half of the PD is gone, canceled. So it's like, how can we meet these teachers and districts? How can we get to them and still provide those services um, virtually? What can we do? So um, that was kind of how all of this started. And I'll go ahead and share my screen. Awesome. Okay, are we good to go? Can you see my doc right here? Inspiring ideas for the class? Yes, yes. Okay, so the first, um, again, I'm approaching this from a coach's point of view because it was kind of, okay, Wabash Valley, what are we gonna do to serve our teachers' needs? They obviously, a lot of schools um, were just very honest and said, we were not prepared for this at all. Um, our teachers, some of our teachers were never even using our learning management system. So now they're at home trying to figure out what to do. And in some cases they were allowed to send packets, but like um, your high school teachers, you know, there's really no reason 
for a packet to be sent out when you're mostly one to one you've got the devices at home you've got um, resourceful students. So a lot of um, the very first part of what we did was we sent out a questionnaire. So we said we sent it to our superintendents and principals and we said what are your teachers um, what's the biggest struggles right now, we know you're probably feeling like you're drowning. Um, what can Wabash Valley do that would be the most helpful. The first thing they said was, well, they just don't have the resources. So I made this um, e learning cheat sheet. You guys are welcome to um, share this on your site or wherever. I've just told people to keep the, um, the credit down at the bottom. But basically, I wanted this to be, um, I didn't want it to be overwhelming because teachers are already, they're probably getting emails from every single educational source saying, we're offering this for free or you can use this or try this. So I said, these were um, these were the best apps and websites that I vetted, I looked into, I used them. And you'll see like, here's under virtual meetings, you've got Zoom and Google Meet. And here are links that will give you tutorials on how to use them. Here's the pros and the cons of each one and examples. Under screen recording, you've got these two um, interactive quizzes. So I tried to make it so that teachers could go in and say, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's a quick, um, here's the site or the app, and here's a link to learn how and some ideas. Um, and we got a lot of positive feedback from that. A lot of um, clicks were, we sent out a newsletter and we can see how many clicks like on each link and this one had the most. So teachers were definitely interested in this. So again, feel free. And I told, um, I told our districts, I said, feel free to make a copy and make it your own. Like, Maybe you guys are not a Google school and you need to make it for Microsoft. Okay, well, go ahead and take it and do what you need to do. So good um, responses from that. The other thing um, that was actually on this cheat sheet was check out more teacher resources here. This is actually a Kyle Klein special right here. If he didn't highlight this, he should have. Uh -huh. He did. <laughs> so he um, made kind of like a template. So I can't, he put this like in the master slide. So it's not like I could go in here and delete his work, but he made a template for teachers to add their own content of what they've been doing that is helpful so that you can just, anyone in the state, I'm sure there's people outside the state that are commenting on this. Like this teacher, I don't know who this is, but she put offline access in Google Drive. So for her, that was something useful she's doing. So she shared it on these slides. And again, Kyle's like, you know, share this with anyone. Um, one that I've been highlighting that I had never heard of, it's called Pobble 365, and it's one picture per day. So every day there's a new picture and they're very thought provoking pictures. You can see this is one that I pulled or who uh, this teacher pulled. Um, it's an elephant. And he's got some suitcases and a tiger on the back. So a lot of things that we've done with this is talk to teachers about conversation starters or writing starters. If you have a writing block, you, know, you could send your students to this site or heck, you could just screenshot the photo, put it into your um, into your LMS or whatever you're sending to your students and say, you know, start a conversation. Let's type for 10 minutes and come up with a story on this. Or I also told teachers you could um, put this picture in a flip grid and you could say, okay, students, um, give me like a one minute synopsis of what's going on in here. And again, that's big for our EL students as well. Um, they, it's very important for visuals for our EL students. So even for them to be able to see this picture and to just talk for a minute, that's great oral language skill development that they're developing right there. Um, Flipgrid is also great if your students can't type yet. So if you've got kindergarten students and you're thinking, well, I, my students can't type, like there's no way they'd come up with a story. Well, they could tell you a story about it. I bet if I called my five and year five year old in here, she could probably tell you a great story about this. Um, so that's been a favorite of mine that I've done. I'm going to talk about Google Voice in a little bit, so that's a great one. But these were just slides that are teacher created, where teachers said, "Hey, I'm using this tool. It's amazing. I think you should look at it too." And that is a link at the bottom of the teacher resources. Perfect. The next thing that I did was teachers said, "We just want to talk." So I set up virtual office hours. Um, they were for two weeks and I set them up to try and do like grade bands. So I did um, like K to five and then six to 12 and I gave them an hour. And basically I would highlight something that I thought was really neat. Like I might go show them that Pobble or I might show them something on Flipgrid 
or um, Screencastify. And then after that, I just said, okay, what do you guys want to talk about? And they, I always had an open um, Google doc that they, that was live. So they were adding questions. They were adding resources. You know, they, there were people from all the way up north, all the way down south. So they'd say, you know, how are you guys doing this? Or how are you doing with this? And they would just talk. And that was probably, I think the most beneficial for them was just talking to each other because, you know, us teachers, we're probably pretty social people and we want to be able to talk to each other. So that was important for the teachers. And I could tell that that was, um, that gave them a lot and it gave them some confidence too, to say, okay, so it's, I'm doing, I'm already doing some good things. And then I've got some good ideas to take back with me. From that's helpful. That, that's helpful to get feedback from your peers. Yeah, to say like, hey, we're in this fight together. We're all drowning and we're going to hang on somehow. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing that we did kind of from there. So we said, we don't want to just drop this training. So the teachers are finally buying in. A lot of um, our district said, you know, our teachers did not want to do e-learning, but you you cannot not do it now. You have to do it. So a lot of our districts have said, how can we keep this going? How can we say, even though things are back to quote unquote normal, which who knows if and when they that will be, um, how can we keep our technology rolling? So now um, we've developed some virtual PD as well as in-person PD. Um, the next one that we're doing is in July and it's an embrace e-learning. So it's kind of like, okay, let's take what you did over the summer. You learned a lot. Now let's make sure that when you go back this fall, you don't like just push those things aside or let's make sure if this fall is some sort of hybrid where it's you're at home half the time and your students are at home and then you get to see them a little bit. Let's make sure that we're ready for that, especially for those districts. There were some districts who flat out just said, we cannot do e-learning either because of um, a lot of districts had Wi-Fi problems. A lot of districts didn't were not one to one yet. So um, those are the districts who are now kind of scrambling saying, if school is not the norm this fall, we are going to be in trouble. So we're trying to work with those districts to make sure that they're not in the same boat that they were in March, that we've got a plan. Um, we've been talking to a lot of our admin about a strategic um, technology plan, which a lot of districts did not have in place prior or um, I work with a tech team and we looked at the district's tech plans and some of them were like from 2011, you know, so they were very out. <laughs> yes. We got to get those updated a little bit. Um, the last couple things that I highlighted, these were mostly the things that I highlighted on the virtual office hours. So a lot of districts and teachers are worried about their students' social emotional wellness. You know, um, we've talked about how I used to work with a migrant program. So it was social emotional wellness was really big for us because, um, you know, home life may be a little bit unstable or it may not be the best situation. Um, so we've talked about now that these students are, for lack of a better word, you know, confined to their homes for the most part, how can we still stay connected with our students? And then you've also got the teachers who feel like they got three fourths of a year and then it was just abruptly cut off with their students. So we talked about ways to stay connected. The first one was Google Voice. So you can set up um, a phone number or a voicemail from your Google and it's it never gives a number away. It never You never have to put your personal phone number in. So like from my personal Gmail account, I can set up a Google Voice and then I can give that number to parents and it's just an auto-generated number. And if they call that, it only calls to either my Google Voice app on my phone or it leaves a voicemail and it will transcribe it. So if I don't get it, I can look at it later on my phone and I can see that's transcription. A lot of teachers have said that they love it because they keep some of those voicemails. Like if they're really sweet or, you know, if your students are checking in on you or you're checking in on them or getting some praise or something, they'll keep those voicemails for future use. So that was an easy one um, that really requires not a lot of background knowledge for teachers. And it's just easy for parents to call anytime and then you can kind of decide, okay, I don't want calls all day long, but I can go in at three o'clock and I can respond to all of my Google voice messages. Um, the next awesome one that I think is so underused and I know Kyle highlighted it was Flipgrid. 
So I love Flipgrid because let's be honest, students are on social media. Like they're, they're on social media. There's no way that they're not. Um, and, you know, we've got everything blocked in schools. We've got Snapchat blocked. We've got Facebook blocked. They still find ways around it. So it's like, how can we keep them in our, we want to keep them safe. So how can we keep them in a safe environment? Well, Flipgrid is perfect for that. So I've talked to teachers about doing wellness checks with their students. Um, when you're in Flipgrid, there are ways that you can um, set the responses so that it's only between you and the students. So if you're like, are you, um, how are you feeling today? Are you green? Are you in the green? You're feeling great. You know, tell me why. Well, I got a new bike or um, I didn't have to do e-learning today or something. Or are you in the red today? How and why are you in the red? And if they're in the red, you know, and they don't want to share that with 25 other kids, then you can go in there and it can just be between you and them. And then you can follow up and say, you know, I saw that you were in the red today. Why are you feeling that way? Um, and let's be honest, students like to see each other too. So they can take the video of themselves and then they can put the cool stuff on the stickers and the filters. They just, they love that. Um, oh, the next really helpful thing was let's let students talk about non-educational things. So they're already getting all this e-learning. They're sick of being on their computers. So I said, try to find some prompts that just get your students talking, like let them talk to each other. One of the prompts I had on Flipgrid was, um, would you rather? And it was a, would you rather like be a unicorn or a genie? Or would you rather ride your scooter for um, the next week or only ride your bike for the next week? So, you know, let them have a show and tell, let them have a talent show, let them talk that it doesn't have to be like graded, but just to see like what they're doing. <clears throat> and then the last way to keep um, <clears throat> in touch with your students Google Forms are so simple. I don't think there's, they're, they're not as great as having a video aspect like Flipgrid, but Google Forms are very simple to where students can simply say like today on a one to 10 scale, <clears throat> I'm feeling like I'm a 10. And then they can respond why, or today I'm a one because I don't know, my parents made me clean my room or something. So those are awesome. I feel like if teachers get, teachers sometimes get like, they they look at Flipgrid and they get overwhelmed. Sometimes I say, okay, well, why don't you start with Google Forms and just let them tell you like how they're feeling and why. And I think some teachers are like, okay, I can handle that. I can't handle Flipgrid yet, but I can handle the Google Forms. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to stop sharing. Um, some teachers were talking about how they could have a Zoom for like 30 of their students and they get maybe two to show up. So I'm like, okay, well, if I had Zooms for like several of my classes each day, like that could get boring. So I was trying to show them, and hopefully I can get this to work, how to kind of spice it up. If you guys have ever heard of Snap Camera, um, Snap Camera is, um, it's, a, it's just an, you can download it. So it's, um, it's free. You just put in a personal email address. Um, but you can tell them that like the Mandalorian stopped by today, or this one's a big hit. The kids think that this one is awesome. I showed this to my nephews and they were like, do you, do you play Fortnite? You have a Fortnite hat. And I'm like, oh, I'm pretty cool. Like I'm, I know what you guys are doing. You know, they think that's great. And I'm like, you know, guys, my mind was blown by all of your awesome ideas that you had. And I'll, I'll, when I'm on teach with teachers, I'm like, guys, this is where we all wish we were, but we're in Indiana. Um, and sometimes I tell them that there's a celebrity that stopped by and that Post Malone was going through the neighborhood and um, that the police were called because the education was too much fun and they never believe that, but you know. So, um, that is my last little keep things fun. Um, try not to let education, you know, bog you down because they want to have fun. Oh, I forgot my favorite one. And this is the one that students love the most. So I've got to show it. <laughs> the Tiger King. They all love the Tiger King. They are all about it. <laughs> when I get on there and show them this, they're like, what? How did you do that? And I'm like, well, I, that's just the kind of cool teacher I am. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> I might have to use that in my next meeting. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. And it's just, um, it's snap camera and you just can, on your little um, video, button you just toggle back and forth between snap camera and then your computer's camera and it's that simple 
Oh, cool. That is awesome. That's the first one I've seen uh, anything like that uh, for WebEx. It's yeah. The uh, Zoom, you can do the virtual backgrounds and stuff, but I have not seen the, the I mean, those like Snapchat filters, you know, I have not seen that for the computer. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a big hit. The kids love it. The teachers love it. You instantly become very cool when you do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Need all the help. It's a cool. <laughs> my kids think it's funny, too. What were you saying, Sarah? Sorry. No, I I like I liked when you pointed out too, just kind of the levels of comfort for the teachers that um, because I can totally envision or or see that you know if you're if Flipgrid's overwhelming, maybe start with a Google form, and then as you get more comfortable with that, kind of move up. I I that's a great point. Yeah, and I think that for the teachers who were forced into this, who didn't necessarily want to do it, if you can give them, they don't want a toolbox. Like they don't want you to give them 25 awesome things. They want maybe like three. So if I can get them like bought into, let's try these three things. Google forms will be one, you know, maybe Google slides will be your next one. If they can just start small, you know, and have those small victories, it makes things so much better. It really does. Well, and it builds their confidence. And then I think you're more likely to try new things once you get you know, that with like, like a, like the first three, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I think that's good advice too. Uh, tell them not to get overwhelmed, but to start with one in two things and uh, start slow. You don't have to jump in and know, be an expert at everything. That's something I've been telling teachers now that you don't have to be an expert in all of this. It's, it's, it's not what you were trained to do, it's, but you can do a lot of things that you don't realize you can do. And so let's start with one thing here and there. Yep, that's exactly true. So I like that. I like those. It's uh, I can't wait to use the camera thing. <laughs> You'll instantly be really cool on all your meetings. <laughs> I always join our office meetings with a different one and the ladies always think it's hilarious. <laughs> that's Great. awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. We really appreciate you uh, agreeing to do this and Coming on, and I know we had struggles connecting. You even got through that, and uh, I think now we know how to help other people connect. <laughs> yeah, and that's just like teachers. You're gonna you're gonna start something, and something's not gonna work. And if it doesn't, you know, you'll figure it out. Even if you don't try something new, and it'll it'll be okay. It's good to know that they can fail too, just like us. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Please hit that subscribe button so you'll continue to hear about new resources for the classroom. If you have a resource to share or want us to find a resource about something in particular, tweet us at Purdue SOS or email us at k12science at purdue.edu. Boiler up. Hammer down.